allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. quiet zone stuff we finally started today um, delineators are up on Penfield and the road widening took place on Hodges Street so we if the weather plays nice we could potentially be done by the end of the week um, if that were to take place the railroad still has 60 days to come out and do their investigation and give us the actual quiet zone that we're looking for so it's in the works and it's finally moving forward I have a proclamation, uh, and I'll be very brief with it. I, uh, Greg Smansky, Village President of the Village of Beecher, do hereby proclaim May 1st to May 31st, 2021, as Motorcycle Awareness Month, and encourage motorcycle awareness and safe uh, motoring for all. Can I have a motion to support? So moved. Second. And there was a motion made, and there was a second. Any questions? Roll call. Possession? Yes. Reserve? House? Yes. Approves? Yes. Bailey? Yes. Hi. Yes. Okay, committee reports, finance and administration trustee report. All right. Uh, public hearing to consider a budget for fiscal year 21-22. Um, I'll go ahead and make a motion to open the public hearing. Motion made. Is there a second? Second. There is a second. Any questions? Roll call. Meyer? Yes. Bailey? Yes. Caparos? Yes. Caparos? Yes. 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 All right, Bob, take it away. Okay, I know we have some children in the audience tonight that can't wait to talk to Grandpa and eat some of Grandpa's cake, so I'll be as quick as I can. Uh, we are statutorily required to 
uh, present the budget uh, in the public hearing in, in the form of a speech. I'll be very brief. Uh, the budget process begins actually in the fall. We need to complete a five-year financial plan. Uh, then, then in January, the department heads submit their request to the administrator. Uh, final revenue projections are made, and the first draft of the budget comes out in early February and is shared with all the committees. The second draft of the budget is then given to the Finance Committee in mid-February. The Finance Committee then held a six-hour budget workshop on Saturday, March 6th, to review the entire budget, make changes, and recommend a third draft to the Village Board. The Village Board then held its annual budget workshop on Monday, March 22nd, out at the Public Works Garage, so we could all be socially distant and yet be able to yell at each other. And then the final amendments uh, were then made uh, to the budget at that time. The budget then goes to a fourth draft for public hearing, which is where we are tonight. The budget can still be amended, tabled, or approved as a result of tonight's public hearing. This budget and the message has been on the Village's website since April 21st, and due notice was published of the hearing in the local paper. Uh, the Village did increase the police protection, ta uh, police protection property tax levy by 1.5%, which generated $9,248.83 which is helping to pay for the cost of a new full-time officer for the department. No new sources of revenue for the general fund uh, were allocated, but several general revenue items are growing slowly, including the sales and use tax, video gaming tax, and cable franchise fees. Some revenues that have declined, uh, with the largest uh, decline being the telecommunications tax, as people eliminate their landline. This is also the first year in 20 years without a sales tax reimbursement to Waltz Foods. The village now collects the full 2% sales tax on all eligible items at Waltz. The village is now under two new collective bargaining agreements this year, and the police contract will be up this coming fiscal year. Department heads were given a 2% raise, except the superintendent was given 2.5% based on catch-up for the position. PPO health insurance rates uh, increased by 5.7% for those on the PPO plan. The IMRF pension employer contribution rate actually dropped this year to 8.16% for all employees compared to 8.87% last year. The village remains at about 93% funded and investments are doing well. We have not obtained any new census figures yet and we're being told it's going to be in September. So this budget is based on actual 2010 population. Uh, we will probably not use any changes in population to predict per capita revenues until next fiscal year. Uh, there is also a concern that if we go over 5,000 population, we will automatically go into the downstate police pension system and immediately inherit a $297,000 unfunded pension liability. This is because the pension is higher and the length of service required to receive the pension is only 20 years. Staff does not believe at this time that that's going to happen until 2030. A uh, new full-time officer is being added to the police department to cover a shift that is exclusively manned right now by part-timers. As you know, part-time officers are getting harder and harder to find. Thanks to Mr. Hancock and his comrades in the police, we're happy to have part-time officers supplementing our full-time staff. Five public works uh, part-time positions are also funded. Uh, this includes uh, two for one for the park, Fireman's Park. Uh, two summer kids for mowing, and the other two are going to be allocated to the meter replacement program uh, for the coming fiscal year. We have about 380 meters to put in as part of our lead line reduction program. Some utility taxes are still being used to offset the realigning of office staff into the general fund from the water and sewer fund. We have deferred squad car replacement this year, uh, but the budget calls for a feasibility and site selection study for this construction of a new police station. The board plans to go to referendum on that in November of 2022, depending on the results of the feasibility study. Uh, but we need to do the study first to find out what we need and how much it's going to cost. We plan to replace 25,000 in sidewalks, 25,000 in damaged curbs, 5,000 in mud jacking of sidewalks that have sunk. 75,000 also is currently in the budget for patching some of our more poor streets in town. The opening on the Penfield Street Rehab Project is scheduled for November 5th, 2021. That project will begin in the spring of 22, and then in 2023, the village will have to pay its $980,000, 20% share of that project. 
to where banking funds and motor fuel tax and infrastructure accounts for that purpose. If we are short, we'll have to pull a tender loan from the local bank uh, to pay for the remainder of that project. It's too early to tell exactly where we're going to be, but it looks like we'll have enough reserves that we'll only have to borrow about 250000 at that time. We are committed to replacing water mains on Gould Street from Miller, Indiana, and the two crossings under the railroad tracks east of Gould, but have to wait for the state to release the grant funds. This has been a very trying process, but it will happen. We'll have to rebid the job uh, this spring or summer, an RFP for the construction management engineer. We hope to get this project underway before Labor Day. We're also planning to go to bid on Dixie Highway water main replacement. There are several crossovers that have to occur, and then we can abandon the uh, old water main on the west side of Dixie Highway. I'm not going to sugarcoat this, but there are some significant fee increases that residents will have to experience this year on the water and sewer system on their water utility bills. There is a combined water and sewer rate increase of 50 cents per thousand gallons, which went into effect on March 1st. This rate increase will pay for the increasing cost of pumping water, chemical injection, and overall maintenance of water and sewer systems. This will cost the average water customer $7 per billing on an average 14,000 gallon water bill, or $42 per year. The water main replacement charge also went up by $1 per thousand gallons on March 1st. Increasing the water bill on a 14,000 gallon average user by $14 per billing or $84 per year. <clears throat> this money is deposited directly into the water main replacement account and used for that purpose only. Once all ductile iron mains are replaced in town, these fees can go away. At the rate we're going, uh, it looks like it might take 20 years, but we'd like to get it done much faster than that. Uh, the property tax levy increase I talked about before was offset by a 5.112% increase in the assessed value of property. This means that a home with a market value of $235,000 would pay approximately $20.39 less in 2021 than that property owner did in 2020 to the village. This is assuming that all other things remain the same, such as the assessed value of the home. On the refuse side, there will be a 75% or 75 cent per month increase in the refuse rates effective July 1, 21, to pay our vendor home with disposal, which brings the annual increase in the cost of refuse collection to $9. Therefore, a typical single family home in Beecher at $235,000 using 14,000 gallons of water per year will pay on average $114.61 more to the village of Beecher this coming fiscal year than it did the prior fiscal year. A minimal residential water user will see an overall increase of $94.50 over the course of one year on their water bills. Most of this increase will be dedicated to the water system. This year's budget is balanced and no reserves are required to fund any of our operations. Uh, Mr. Chairman, this is a proposed budget for fiscal year 21-22. Okay. Um, while we're still in public hearing, there's uh, couple of things that have come up since then uh, where we've gotten some uh, more true numbers. I think it's best to bring it up here. Um, that way we can amend the budget for approval when we come out of the hearing. Um, and those would be in uh, Fund 19, Public Infrastructure Account. Um, for road patching, we're going to uh, Increase that from seventy-five thousand. We're going to add an additional thirteen thousand three hundred and sixteen dollars. Um, that would include. Bob, you want to read those three extra sections that are going to get included with that then on the repairs? Yes, the main one is we were we're going to do with the original seventy-five thousand church road from Cardinal Creek to the junior high. Uh, the alley off of, off Miller behind Gould Street a section of Park Lane and a section of Birch Lane. And then this will and include this. Down. This will include, if we add this 13,000, we can also do Fox Hound from Church Road to Spring Cove. Okay. And then uh, the last amendment, which was also in the capital outlaw infrastructure, uh, would be 06. That's the drainage improvements, which we approved last month. Uh, we need to change that number from 7,500 to 10,000. 
and then I believe Scott, did you have one other? I did. I'm going to defer that to Bob. He has the. Uh, Okay, well, before I get the numbers, Scott, I know it's under your committee report, uh -huh. but since we're talking about your budget number, let's maybe present the findings of the splash pad that we had last week. Do you want to okay. go over that? All right. Splash pad update. We met last week with the splash pad vendor to obtain proper bid specifications for the installation of the equipment. The equipment can be purchased through a National Joint Purchasing Association bid program which is called source well, but the insulation and the concrete work needs to be bid out. We hope to have this all ready for a motion and authorized bid letting and a purchase for the next meeting. Now, just today we, uh, we received some photos and another brochure, and I think it's in front of everybody, uh, regarding the splash pad, we changed uh, we, we cut the number of shades that we have around the development, we cut it to two. Uh, we thought that was uh, necessary. One big thing that came up uh, at the village board meeting was the fact of going from a concrete pad to a pad, like a cushion pad, on the whole splash pad, which would stop kids from getting skinned up, I would hope. They're probably still going to get skinned up, but it would be better than hitting or falling on a concrete pad that's brushed, you know, which everybody knows that's kind of a rough surface. So uh, that pad alone uh, is going to be an additional 35000 for that soft pad. So that's going to be one addition to the splash pad. We're also going to be doing, uh, we talked about the pad is being actual tiles, and I don't know if you have copies of this. No, but, that's the only set. But the tiles, what's nice about the tile design is you can make any design you would like. Also, if a part of the cushion or the pad gets damaged, you can actually put these inserts in. They're like tiles where you can replace it. A lot of people have carpet in their house or in their business where they're tiles. So if you get a stain or you get a rip, you can replace it. And that's the same type of system that we have here. So uh, that's what we're talking about, the splash pad. We would like to get it going this year and uh, get it up and running because I think uh, it would be a great addition to the Fireman's Park. So Bob, you want to take over with the... Yeah, we saw... Go ahead. All right. So adding 52,000 that would go under fund 10 capital improvements, which would um, has the encumbered amount of 77 from the quiet zones. So that will change from 252 to 304. And then we would uh, add revenue, change the revenue side alone from 175 to 227. 227, yep, that addition. Any questions about the splash pad? I think we've talked about this quite a bit. It will increase your annual payments in future years on that loan, but we're not looking at that until next year. Correct. And if you want to do it, do it right. Yeah. Right. Absolutely. I think so too. And I think that was the overall feel that we had from the entire board as far as if we're going to do it, let's do it right and let's, uh, let's get it going. So that ends my report. So, based on with those changes reflected, um, is there any questions on the public hearing for the budget? If not, I'll make a motion to close the public hearing for the budget for fiscal year 21 22. Motion on the floor. Is there a second? Second. A second. Any questions? Go call. Possession? Yes. Missouri? Yes. Crowds? Yes. Capurros? Yes. Wheeling? Yes. Meyer? Yes. Uh, item two, consider resolution number 2021-05. 2021-05, adopting uh, the budget as presented for fiscal year 21-22. I'll go ahead and make a motion to approve resolution 2021-05, adopting a budget for fiscal year 21-22. As amended. As amended. The motion on the floor, is there a second? Second. There's a second. Any questions? 
Roll call. Meyer? Yes. Yes. Burroughs? Yes. Burroughs? Yes. 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 Possession? Yes. Consider ordinance number 1349, adopting an appropriation for fiscal year 21-22. This ordinance uh, appropriates exactly the same funding as budget uh, is presented with as amended. So I'll go ahead and make a motion approving <laughs> ordinance 1349. Motion on the floor. Is there a second? Second. Second, any questions? Pro call. Possession? Yes. Preserve? Yes. Pros? Yes. Pros? Yes. Cleveland? Yes. Fire? Yes. 2021-06, Mayor? Yes. All right. Consider a resolution 2021-06 appropriating motor fuel tax funds for fiscal year 21-22. Uh, this resolution is the same that's approved in the budget. From T and is uh, basically requires separate resolution for IDOT. So I will go ahead and make a motion to approve resolution 2021-06. Motion on the floor. Is there a second? Second. There is a second. Any questions? Meyer? Yes. Whaling? Yes. 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 Possession? Yes. Includes my report. Thank you. The building of property we've already done. Planning, building, and zoning committee trustee deserve. Okay. The PZC public hearing on the fence variance. Um, we had a hearing last Thursday night um, for a request for a variance for a fence in the front yard setback of 320 Mallards Cove. A finding of fact and ordinance is being drafted based on the recommendation made by the PZC that night and will be considered at the next village board meeting, which is new time. Um, we didn't really have any hiccups with that. There was one resident that opposed and showed up, but at the end of it, when we talked about things, she seemed okay with it. Um, she had an issue with having a child uh, fenced in as a prisoner, but the um, petitioner explained that, as well as um, she spoke with other residents who kind of were confused because they were always told they couldn't have a fence like that, and we explained that that ordinance had changed. So towards the end of it, it seemed good, and we want to move forward. That's all I have. Thank you. Public Safety Committee, we already covered. <coughs> Public Works Committee, Trustee Meyer. Uh, Route 1 resurfacing update. The most up-to-date information we have will be provided at the meeting. I believe May 3rd. May 3rd is supposed to start some concrete work, mainly in Crete, but not near Balmoral, and resurfacing, I believe, is supposed to start the week of the 20th or 23rd, whatever that week is. So, a couple weeks out, yeah. They're starting down there and then working their way down. It sounds like they're going north and south. Mm -hmm. Yep. Uh, Pool Street Water Main update. We're still awaiting an executed grant agreement from the state. In the meantime, the Union Pacific Railroad has changed its regulations for installing pipes below the rail lines, which is required us to reapply for their permits. Yeah, I don't want to get into it. It's very frustrating and very detailed, and we'll talk about it May 10th. I don't think it's going to change. Okay. Dixie Highway Water <coughs> Main Design Update. Um, I met with Baxter and Woodman out there last Wednesday in our uh, little snowstorm we had and walked the entire project. Um, came up with some other different plans and ideas, and Indiana Avenue is an add-on. Um, when was uh, Dixie resurfaced last? 2007-ish? 05. 05. Um, when it was done then, for whatever reason, we couldn't do the water main crossing under Dixie to uh, East Indiana. We're trying to figure out a way to do that now, though, while we have the permits from the state and try to get it all done as one big project. So. They're trying to design that right now, and hopefully we'll get some numbers from them. They told me they were going to have them today, but I don't, I don't, I didn't receive anything. I so, okay. <clears throat> okay. Fireman's parking lot update. Okay, um, that is set to begin repaving next Monday, May third. Um, I don't remember who the contractor is for the concrete work that they have already had done, but Pavement Systems out of Blue Island is doing their parking lot for them. And I know they're very grateful for what the village board gave to them in order to get that project completed. So. Mm -hmm. Check it out. Well, but it's just a session. So on the like, newsletter, uh, Jeanette was nice enough to let me know it's going to be going to print by next tomorrow. Uh, yeah, delivered to the post office delivered tomorrow. Delivered to the post office tomorrow. Yes. Thank you. Uh, and so it should be out uh, shortly. Any old 
business to come before the board? Any new business to come before the board? Okay. All right, I have the uh, honor to present Trustee Mazur, who is also a member of the four year term, with a uh, certificate of appreciation for the four years dedicated service to the village feature, uh, Stacey Mazur. Second, 
I would like to thank all my supporters from this great community and everyone that voted for me over the years. Finally, thank you to all the present and past board members, office staff, administrator, police chief, superintendent, and everyone that works for our village. We have the best of the best working for this village. So uh, thank you.
would like to thank you for your many years of service and for always treating village staff as family. And we will greatly miss your daily visits and your, your caring ways because you've always been very good to all of us. And will you start? <laughs> uh, thank you. And I echo Scott, but truly, when you look around the room, look around our village, look at the table that we have sitting here and the people sitting in it. Nothing, nothing, nothing can be done without all of you. And I appreciate everything the village residents have done, the people in this room have done, our volunteers, our staff, our employees, especially this village board who has worked with a team for the longest time. Nothing in that resolution could have been done without you. And I thank you and I wish you the best in the future. Thank you. 